to call to order the uh, the meeting of the committee of the whole tonight for Monday, June 9th. Uh, roll call, please. Warren here. Val here. Jacker here. Gesher here. Heidemann here. Kittleson. Uh, we'll now uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, well, it's my pleasure to introduce to the city and to the council as a whole our new Director of Finance, Terry Hansen. Uh, today is day one for uh, Director Hansen. I'd like to welcome him and his family to the city of Sheboygan and invite him to come up and uh, say a few words. Well, hello, Alderman. I appreciate this opportunity to be of service for the city of um, Sheboygan. Sorry, I almost slipped up with my old city there. <laughs> and. Um, I met a lot of people today, and, and um, everybody was extremely friendly and, and courteous, so you should take great pride in the people that are servicing um, Sheboygan. And it's a great community. I just got here last night, but I look forward to my first week and, and can't wait to get the family into town. So I thank all of you, and I look forward to working with you, and, and hopefully um, we'll have many, many, many years of service ahead of us. So thank you. Great, and moving down the agenda to number five, a multimedia presentation by the Wellness Committee. This is uh, to be up to 60 minutes, including a question and answer period on various wellness programs, uh, including, but not limited to, the wellness program presentation. All the person Kittleson, please. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chairman Bauck, uh, and all the aldermen for being here, everyone in the audience and everyone watching at home. Uh, we're so happy to be here this evening to uh, allow our wellness committee to, port, to report to you three things we have. We'd like to give you first a brief overview of what our committee has accomplished during the past six months that we've been in existence. And then we have two presentations by our good friends at the county and a summary of Bike and Walk to Work Week that took place May 10th through the 16th. And then a presentation with a question and answer time at the end regarding an exciting health program that has been so generously offered to us here at the city through our insurance carrier and one that our wellness committee is very, very excited about as well. So who are we? Let's begin back on December 3rd, 2007. The Common Council passed a resolution, whereas the city of Sheboygan has entered into a high deductible health insurance plan for 2008 and 9. And as part of that plan, we will offer a wellness program. So wellness program, what does that mean? That can mean different things to different people. Um, it can mean being proactive rather than reactive to one's own health care. It can be just a little change in attitude, a little different way of looking at things. Um, it can mean walking rather, somewhere rather than taking a car, riding your bicycle more, uh, becoming more active on a regular basis. And of course, each person's wellness style is very unique and different, and of course, is left up to the discretion of each individual, always on a voluntary basis. The following week, uh, December 7th, the Wellness Committee was formed. And these are the key people that our city employees can feel free to contact when they are looking for information regarding plans and, in and initiatives when it comes to our wellness programs. I'd just like to uh, introduce the few that are here in the audience. We have Mark Zephus representing the library, our Mead Library. We have Marion Health. Uh, senior Center, the uh, Activities Coordinator there, Susan Hart, Human Resources. We have Pat Dugan, uh, representing the DPW. And who else? Alderman Jim Gisha is on our Wellness Committee as well. And we have Lieutenant Mike Williams. He's the Vice Chair of the Committee. And I, of course, am your Chairman. And Nancy, and Nancy Buss, 
from finance. She's in back there as well. We appreciate all their help and, and uh, coming to the meetings. Um, it just, it's just so important that they, uh, that they be there. We began, began meeting and working on a weekly basis to establish a mission statement, a value statement, and a vision, which you see up in front here. And the main focus of those three things uh, being to promote good health and wellness among our family of city workers. So committee members then contacted several companies in and out of the city who already have established well wellness programs in place. And we came to the consensus that most companies gave rave reviews to an organization called WellCoa, or the Wellness Council of America. And it gives out lots of wonderful information on wellness, especially if the people have the ambition and the drive to work on the seven benchmarks that can gain the status of a well city. It is a very prestigious award given out by our state government, and our committee is working on that uh, initiative as well. Our committee then crafted a letter communicating wellness awareness to all city employees, and with some very wonderful press coverage, we held our Employee Appreciation Day on Friday, March 7th. Compliments of St. Nicholas Hospital, apples and bottled water were given out to all city employees. Alderman Gisha and I had our picture in the paper. We were very grateful for that. I think our employees appreciated it as well. And then our friends from Aurora continued to educate us for the next seven weeks by setting up displays throughout various locations in the city with names like Portion Distortion, Rethink Your Drink, there was a food pyramid, a calcium display, label reading. I'm sure many of you saw those wonderful displays. It just made you stop and think about some of these things that we oftentimes take for granted. Just a little way of maybe looking at things, changing our thinking about how we approach our, our own wellness. Our next big activity that we participated in, and I know how much I enjoyed it, and I know many others did as well, was the Bike and Walk to Work Week that was held May, May 10th through the 16th. This week was designed to get everyone thinking about their mode of transportation to and from work, and ultimately getting people out of their cars and on their feet or on their bicycle. What really made the week special is that the city, the county, and the Sheboygan Area School District took up several challenges with one another. And as I said earlier, we have Erin and Mary. They'll be here to present some awards to us this evening. But before I, right on the heels of Bike and Walk to Work Week, came the Let's Get Physical Sheboygan County Challenge, and that took place on Wednesday, May 21st. A total of 22 companies, including the city of Sheboygan, participated in this activity as well. We needed to do at least 20 minutes of exercise sometime before work, during the noon hour, or after work. I'm proud to say that we had 118 people, all city workers, participate for a total of 5,545 minutes of activity, almost 21% participation. Next year's event will take place on Wednesday, May 20th, so uh, we have a whole year to get ready to communicate the information out to all our employees and prepare for an even bigger event with greater participation. So that brings us to right here and now. I'd like to introduce Erin Brault and Mary Ebling, and they work with the non-motorized transportation program at the county. Uh, the two of them were instrumental in planning the events that took place throughout the week, and they will give us a recap and do some presentations. So I will let Erin and Mary... Hi, everybody. Um, I guess, first of all, we don't really have much of a formal presentation for you the, tonight, but uh, we just want to let you all know how excited we were to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the city and the school district and lose. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but really, the great thing was the participation. I mean, as the, the non-motorized pilot program manager, I don't care who's biking and walking to work. I want the most people biking to walk. What I care about is that as many as possible are biking and walking to work, not where they actually are employed. So congratulations to you guys. And a brief history before I turn it over to Aaron. Uh, we uh, did a little digging, and I guess the first bike to work week ever was in 1956. And do you remember what city it was in? Uh, League of American Cyclists did it in Washington, D.C., I believe. Okay. And... Then it was a little quiet for a while, and over the last decade or so, it's really been building momentum, and in Wisconsin as well as nationwide. Um, the obvious uh, um, 
cities that you would expect to do to spearhead an initial bike to work week were Madison and then Milwaukee. But recently, some of the smaller municipalities and uh, I would say the really cool municipalities like Sheboygan uh, have started in on their bike and walk to work week. And uh, so we've joined uh, La Crosse. I think Ashland has done one. I'm not totally certain of that. But uh, Sheboygan did a really great one where we got a huge amount of mode shift. Uh, some of the, the Sheboygan Press's online poll showed close to 20% of people who were respondents saying, yes, I'll either do it for the whole week or only when the weather's good, but still I'm going to give it a try. And those types of efforts lead to change in how people make their life decisions. So um, that's my brief. Uh, I'm gonna, sure. Yeah, I'll just we're just going to bounce back and forth a little bit. Some of what the results were of the week. Um, like we said, oh, I'm sorry. Like we said, it was the city, The originally the school district challenged the county, and we in turn as, at the county challenged the city into who could log the most miles um, as an entity. And then we, to make it fair, because each entity had different amounts of employees, we divided by the total number of employees. So um, the city won. Um, they had, they, the city employees logged about 535 miles over the course of the week, and you have about 565 employees, so that turns out to be a ratio of 0.94. Um, the county logged 851 miles, and we have roughly 960 employees, so that came to a ratio of 0.88. The school district has 1,560 employees, and they logged 1,117 miles, and that comes to a ratio of 0.73. So um, looking at the number of folks who participated, too, congrats to the city. Um, you had the highest percentage of your employees participate as well. You had about 8% of your employees participate. Um, which is a great number. You may say 8%, that's not a lot. On a, on a daily average nationwide, um, about 2 to 3% of people are biking and walking to work. So, you know, that's five, six times, or six percentage points better than what the national average is. So, um, with that said, we had uh, four individual awards as well on top of the uh, um, most mileage tracked by an entity. Um, we had the longest commute award by a biker. Longest commute award by a walker, most mileage by a biker, and most mileage by a walker. Um, we had a City of Sheboygan employee, Caroline Fortin, Fort, Fortin um, track the most mileage by a walker at 30 miles over the course of a week. Um, two county employees um, won awards. One was uh, Jane Dragon. She logged 12 miles walking to work one day. She actually took a half day of personal time and walked in from Howard's Grove. Um, so uh, our uh, department head, maintenance department head, logged over 142 miles biking throughout the week. He lives south of Oostburg and biked in five days and biked home five days. So, And then we had uh, the longest commute went to a school district employee, so they weren't entirely left out of the, out of the deal. Um, Brian Hendrickson is a Sheboygan South um, science teacher, I believe, and he commuted 35 miles um, was his, or 17, so round trip, 17 each way, so 34 miles total, so as a round trip commute, so. I guess we have an award for Carolyn. Um, each of the individuals received an award. The, uh, we have a bike um, shop donation from Johnny's Bicycle Shop, so you get $25 from Johnny's Bike Shop. And then Olivu on 8th Street um, donated a party um, I guess that's a place where you can go make candle, candles and yeah, face soaps store. and whatnot. Yeah, and they, uh, you get a party for 8 to 12 of your friends, and they cater in some wine and hors d'oeuvres by Margot. So. Yep. So, nice. yeah. And then I guess the entity, we, we had uh, Sheboygan South shop class, the medals class, uh, Joseph Janicek's class, create a traveling trophy for us. We figure that uh, this isn't going to be a this isn't going to be a one-time thing. Each year we'll do this challenge from here on out, and uh, this is the trophy, and this is your trophy to keep for the at least the next year. So, and so the idea is, we've talked to Jean, um, there's going to be a plaque on here that says that the city of Sheboygan won this year, and then 
the county will do their best to to take it back next year but i i've heard that y'all are uh, already beefing up your numbers <laughs> for participation so we've got our work cut out for us and that's a good thing so we have to let everyone she come on up here. We, we need to let everyone know that uh, the trophy was designed by our own Lieutenant Williams here. Yes. So <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> and we will have some bars put on it at, uh, and, and so that we can go back and forth with, yeah. with each year. So the, the challenges we're on. So we'll and we expect it. this to be displayed prominently in City Hall. <laughs> so we will. Right we will. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is this is something that you know we're trying to change behavior, and it's 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 fun to do, and it's fun to have this participation, and and I think it's been a really good time for everybody, and I hope that folks who walked and biked over that week will continue to do so. Yeah. so. I just one one last thing. Um, Thanks for all your guys' support in passing resolutions for uh, projects like Taylor Drive, bike lane striping, uh, bike racks, and the so. Great job, thank you. Appreciate I think I'm it. Second, third, and fourth. That thank you. <laughs> so, thank you, guys. Well, I'd like to just take a minute to thank Alderperson Kittleson and, the, and her committee and the, and the team for putting this together. I know my company struggles with how to get our employees to participate in our wellness programs more. I think every company in the county is doing that. So kudos to your organization for, for coming up with programs. And the reason we're televising tonight is to get the word out to the citizens that our city employees did. Uh, because we, uh, this health program is new and we did ask our city employees to do something new, which is participating in this wellness program in order to bring down our insurance rates uh, and save the city and the taxpayers money. And so we just want to make sure that the word gets out that they are, are participating and they're doing uh, a lot of their part thanks to the programs you're putting together. Very much, thanks. It's a, it's a whole group effort. And as I said, our wellness committee is, is, committee is doing a fantastic job. So thank you. And uh, I guess, where are we going next? And that brings us to the exciting plans we have for the future. Our wellness committee feels that the following program is a wonderful opportunity being offered to our city, and we're just so very anxious for the rest of you to hear about it. So I'd like to turn the program over to Terry Olivier and her team, Su Susan Myers, Katie Anhauser, and Eric Serrano, and they're going to uh, tell us all about the program. Good evening, and thank you very much. We appreciate the opportunity from Humana's perspective <laughs> to hold the to visit with you this evening and tell you about an exciting program that we are thrilled to be offering the city of Sheboygan. And we'll have just a momentary. <laughs> Our guest will be doing a moment of stand-up while, while we, we get the end. <laughs> Pause now for... I'll tell you what, I'm going to pass this to you guys because we're going to pass it to the audience in a few minutes. That's my go zone. And it's a pedometer with a brain. And there we go. Okay, great. So it's exciting to hear all the great things you are already doing here in the city of Sheboygan and in the county and in the school district around activity and wellness. And as Humana would like to help support that effort, we're thrilled to tonight to offer you a program called Virgin Health Miles. And to tell you a little bit more about it, my friend Katie slash Vanna is going to give the first slide. <laughs> so we'll go through the first, the five W's of Health Miles. And what is it? Well, basically, it's going to fit in nicely with all the wonderful things you're already doing. It's a health rewards program that incentivizes and rewards you for getting active. So while we had some great award winners tonight, Everyone wins with Health Miles, and so it gets more people active and enjoying the program. Who will it be offered to? It will be offered to all city employees, as well as their adult dependents, age 18 and older, and then all retirees and their spouses, and most importantly, no, equally important, <laughs> the older persons will also be able to enjoy the program as well. So it's a widespread effort to get everybody actually continuing to do the wonderful things you're already doing in terms of getting active. When are we going to introduce the program? It will be introduced in July. July 30th has been set as the launch date. And then we will be actually rolling it out online, but you can certainly, if you don't have a computer at home or work, you can go to the Sheboygan Library. Wonderful support that we're getting there that you'll be able to go and actually access your account there as well. And why are we doing this? 
Well, because we can all use a little more activity, the you know, Surgeon General tells us five days a week, at least 30 minutes a day of moderate activity would be great. And so this is a way of doing some of that activity and getting rewarded for it. Thank you. So what are the components of the Health Miles program? The first component is the actual website, where you as a member will have your individual page that you'll be able to go online and track and see your activity, upload your steps, and the go zone, let's see, is it passing around? We're going to get to that in just a minute. Oh, thank you. There we go. So you'll be able to upload your activity, both online in terms of if you did weight-bearing exercises. And I was joking this today. My, my purse was so heavy with my computer in it that I was carrying it like this, doing weight-bearing. And I'm going to go home tonight and log it that I got that exercise. But um, we also have the Gozen pedometer, which is passing around. Now, this is a pedometer with a brain. And it automatically uploads to my personal page the steps that I take in a day. Now, I don't have to log it tonight. It'll actually hold about 10 days' worth of steps. It knows exactly when I take those steps. If you press the button to the right, excuse me, the left. I'm always dyslexic on that. On the left, it'll show you the mileage, the calories burned, the time of day. And it knows exactly when those steps are taken. And it will chart them for me so I can kind of see month over month day over day what I'm doing in my activity. We're going to give the first 30% of the folks that join the program here in Sheboygan a free GoZone pedometer. Those that join after the first 30% will need to make a little bigger investment. They'll need to purchase one if they'd like to get their steps counted. It's uh, going to be $24.99 plus tax. But we're hoping that we're going to have 30% of the folks join right away and get a great GoZone and get active. And then finally, the desktop health zone is the last piece you're seeing there. That is a really neat device, and Humana will be donating two of those to the city of Sheboygan. These will plug into your computers, and I think we are going to have one that will be in the library that folks can use on a regular basis whenever the library is open to get their measurements. And then there'll be one that'll kind of float around from the different departments so people will have access to that. And you may think, well, why would I want to get my weight, my body fat, and my blood pressure taken on a regular basis? Well, the reason why is because you're going to get rewarded. Even if it says, ooh, you're a little hypertensive today, ooh, you need, you'll still get rewarded just for taking your measurements because that's a very core thing to know where are you. And then certainly if you've improved or you're in the ideal range already, then you get rewarded on top of that. So you've taken your measurements and then you're in the range you need to be, or you've improved, you'll get additional reward points. Now, I keep talking about rewards, and you're probably thinking, what is she talking about? Well, Health Miles actually pays you health cash. And just like a frequent flyer club, when you hit platinum, you get additional bonus rewards. Well, we have levels in the Health Miles program, and when you hit those levels, you get cash, health cash, that you can spend. Now, you can go with the $150 reward program, which is what Humana will be purchasing or providing to the city of Sheboygan employees, where you can say, you know, I'm, I want to invest in myself a little bit more. And you can actually go ahead and pay $6.99 a month on your credit card and actually get $500 in rewards. So if you'd like, you can go with a $150 reward program. And I apologize, I'm right in your way. That's included. Or you can upgrade to the $500 reward program. You will need to do that within the first 60 days. As you can see, there are levels, so you can't wait till you're just about to hit level four and then say, you know, for $6.99, that's a much better investment. You have to make that decision early on in the program. But it's a great decision because you're investing in your health, and we all know that's very important. Now, what do you do with this money? You can spend it at about 40 different retailers, and they range from Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, Target, the Ritz, Carlton, there is a bunch of different great retailers that you can use that money. And basically, you'll go online and you will say, I want $25 at Lowe's and I need $25 at Best Buy. And those credit cards will come right to your address or whatever address. You can send them to your mom, your brother. You can have that code wherever you'd like that money to be spent. It's yours to have it spent. So those are the rewards. Now, you guys are already into the challenge mode, which is fantastic. But Health Miles realizes you need to challenge people throughout the year and give them opportunities to have fun. So there'll be two challenges that will be just City of Sheboygan employees and participants in this program. And you'll be able to sign up for teams as well as individuals. And it will be based on how many steps you get on your go zone in a, it's generally a six week time period. And the team with the most steps and the individuals with the most steps, just like we had this evening, will have the opportunity to win additional health cash and rewards. Now, you also have the chance to do challenges yourself. So the aldermen could have a challenge among yourselves. You could challenge the city staff. 
you can have all kinds of fun. Now, the personal challenges that you set out, maybe yourself and individual or teams or departments, you'll be able to put up the prize for those. Virgin won't pay for those prizes. But you can still have a lot of fun, and it can be just for bragging rights if you'd like. There are also two quest events a year. So right now we're in the middle of a quest opportunity. It's the Napa Valley Wine Tour, where every time you get 100 miles, and I need to tell you, miles are not literal miles like you guys did. Wow, that was great. But no, miles in this program are actually points. We use the words interchangeable. And every time you get 100 points or 100 miles for the Napa Valley wine trip that's going on right now, you have a chance to win. And I think Katie's going to win because she actually got 22,000 steps this weekend. (laughs) So... made the boulevards beautiful because Walter Tulsa doesn't pay for that, so we have to do it. <laughs> so we get you to get out here, know your neighbors, and um, 22,000 steps, that's no lie. So it's all about engaging and what can we do to get more active. So that's just one of the components of the program is the competition, whether it's across the whole platform of people participating in Health Miles or just City of Sheboygan employees or just two coworkers that want to challenge each other. Thank you. Now, from your perspective, You'll be able to see reporting, on, and of course it will all be HIPAA friendly, but you'll be able to see how many people are participating in this program. Are we seeing any results in terms of our hypertensive folks that are in the program, seeing improvements? And you'll have a lot of great data that you'll be able to see on a regular basis. Next slide. And I want to share with you some of the data that we've seen at Humana. We've been on the program just over about a year with our 22,000 employees. We've had 29% of our population and I should back up, our population, about 30% of our employees are on this program on a regular basis doing activity. 29% moved from doing less than five days of activity um, of 30 minutes or more a day, have moved from no activity to being active, so they're doing regular activity on a, ba- on a regular basis. 25% of the folks that were either hypertensive or prehypertensive have gone down one full range. We've seen 14% of the folks that were above average in Body fat go down to the normal range. 9% of the obese and overweight folks have moved down at least one full BMI category. So these are outstanding results that we're seeing in the program, and we believe will make a big difference in medical expenses. And that's one of the things right now at Humana, we're taking our data and we're crunching the numbers to see what are the actual results, and we'll be really excited to share that data with you when we see it. The last two um, points, the 20% seeing fewer illness and injuries in the last 30 days, and 17% with fewer days impacted by health, health impacting their work. That is self-reported data. So as part of the program, you'll take an inventory, we call it a health snapshot, and one year later, folks participating in the program reported some really exciting data about how personally they were feeling after participating in Health Miles. When we first launched this program with Virgin Health Miles two years ago, we were talking to employers about it, and We didn't have, it was the first time it had ever been introduced in the U.S., and folks were like, well, how do we know that the folks that aren't always exercising already are going to be the only participants? And we didn't know, but we hoped that it would be something that would reach out to the general population. And, in fact, that's exactly what we're seeing. And folks that are overweight or obese, which is about 60% of the population in the U.S. today, Those are the folks that are on this program. So 60% of our Health Miles participants are overweight or obese, and that's exactly who is attracted to this program. So we're very excited about what that can mean. So what does that mean for all of you all? Well, we're on a walk. We're on a journey, and we want you to join us with Health Miles. Each day, we upload about 100 million steps, go-zone steps, across folks participating in Health Miles, which is the equivalent of walking around the world twice every day. And we want you to join us on that journey. Oh, and I didn't talk about the communication campaign. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Okay. There's lots of communication that helps you on that journey, so you know exactly what is happening. The first three um, pieces over there are the Ready, Set, Go campaign. That happens prior to the launch of Health Miles and allows you to find out what's the program going to entail and what are the opportunities. And then monthly you get the newsletter as well as an individual statement of all the activity that you've done. And you'll get messaging and things. If you like to swim, they'll tell you about swimming. The Go Zone, by the way, does not swim. So if, you use, if you're a swimmer, you need to just go online and log that you swam and get your miles that way. The Go Zone will bubble up. So thank you. I think there might be. And there's our going around the world. So. Questions? Thank you.
Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, please. Absolutely, yes. It's very HIPAA friendly, exactly. So if there's a department that has less than 20 participants, it will be aggregated over to another with another department so that you always see grouping of 20 participants or more. Thank you. That's a great point. Just to clarify, there will be no personal information or results given to the city, correct? Correct. Right. Absolutely. Great question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, can I get credit for miles if I r ride like a Schwinn Aerodyne or an exercise bike? Do those, do those miles count that you do on yes. an exercise bike? You'll want to put the go zone on your shoe because okay. that gets the mileage. And also, if you have a polar heart rate monitor that you use, that is a brand new tool that they are using in the program. So basically, you upload your miles through the polar website, and you'll get miles credit for that as well. Thank you. Great question. And what's the connect for those that aren't familiar with the Virgin brand? Why? What is the connection to the Virgin this, brand? This is one of Richard Branson's two hundred branded companies. So he is a great entrepreneur. He looks at areas in our society that might be a little not so working so well, and healthcare is certainly one of those that he feels he can make an impact and wellness as well. And so he has come up. He actually named the product. So. Uh, I think. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Chairman Bauck. Uh, another question that I, you know, I'm just kind of anticipating from a wellness committee standpoint. We always wanted to, from the beginning, we wanted the aldermen included in this. This is not a financial benefit to the aldermen or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it keeps our eye on the ball, I think we felt. If we can get the more of all of us that participate, we can understand what our, what our family of employees are doing as well. So it's kind of a, we're all in this together type of thing. So I, I hope, uh, and I know the committee does too, that, that we all take advantage of this um, and, and jump on board because uh, we are all in it together. You know, the, the benefits are both personal you know, from a health standpoint, which these nice folks have introduced, but the benefit is also financial, not just to the city and overall cost reductions, but individuals as people are, their percentage of how much they're paying of their insurance premiums are going up and that is the future, and we all kind of know it, and everybody has been talking about it. Uh, if, it'll help us keep those from rising faster or your out-of-pocket expenses smaller. So we are all in it together. That's why I'm hoping that aldermen uh, jump on board, too, and, uh, and get one of the 30% of the health zones because we're too cheap to... <laughs> to buy one for 25 bucks. But if we had to, it's a great idea anyway. You'll be the leaders. You'll be joining first. Right. So you'll get your goes ah, on. Good. That's a good spin on it. Thank <laughs> exactly. And plus, we'd love to have a challenge where we can see your results, you know, which aldermen are getting the most stuff. But we don't have to do that. Right. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, and I know we are looking at a launch date for, for the entire city. Uh, July 30th is, is our goal in the Roca Room of the Mead Public Library. So we want to do a day-long launch that day for everyone. But I think we're going to try and get our, our aldermen and our committee uh, as, uh, as pace setters. We'd like to launch them first. And so we'll be letting you know just exactly where, as I said, our committee meets every Friday. We're working out the plans for all of this. And then we will be doing a ready, set, go campaign on this for everyone. But a as I said, pace setters for the aldermen and the wellness committee uh, looking around July 2nd or somewhere around that time. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes and ears open because we will be communicating via city email and uh, uh, to let you know just what's happening with all of it. And bulletin boards too, whatever we can. And so, there were two sheets that were given out. One just kind of gives you the, a little bit more about the Health Miles program. The other shows you what the desktop health zone unit looks like a little bit better than the slide did. So. Is the delivery for this program always going to be a health care or a health insurance organization? Or is there a time where this could just be popular? I imagine with Richard Branson running it, is this something where someday any citizen could come down to the library on a given day and say, I want to pay my six ninety nine a month and I want to pay my $24 and I want to be able to do this? Actually, there is a model that we can look on making that available. Yes, we can definitely make that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from all the persons or from citizens? I have a comment. I have mine on, as we all do. But mine looks a little different than, than yours because I've had it for two years. That's how longevity they have. I've dropped this thing 
almost down my drain in my base, my, my steel drain. That is my whole, that's my worst year because I'll never be able to get it out of there because it's too broke. But this thing has dropped down stairs, it's dropped down on cement. I've dropped it numerous times. It's really a handy thing and it's still working. And two years for me to be using this, at, and I'm not kidding you, two years this July, Sue and I, we, we were like pilot program in our sales department. I mean, the incentive is there, and I've never been that committed to a program for two years. And I will admit, it's because of the little extra money, but with the price of gas, I have a $40 car that can go to Target and splurge a little bit. So it's really a great program. I love it. I really do. Thank you all. Are there any more any more questions? Uh, all the person Kittleson, please, if you'd like to. Okay. Um, I just want to reiterate that the the program is uh, is being offered to us for one year, so um, that is a very nice benefit as well. And it is our the wellness committee's hope, just to, as to reiterate what uh, Alderman Gish has said, that everyone who is eligible will will get on board with this program because it's just a great way to get motivated, to uh, get active, and to uh, earn a few uh, you know in, uh, earn that. Uh, uh, health cash as well, so it's uh, <laughs> absolutely all right. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you very much. And enjoy our beautiful city, Alderperson Gisha. Uh, thank you, Chairman Buck. I just want to thank Alderperson Kittleson. I don't make every Friday uh, for work reasons. I get there about every other Friday, give or take. She has been the driving force. I think the committee will all be nodding their heads keeping us all motivated and keeping this thing moving. It's not easy to meet every week and be up. And, and the reason we have all this participation to this point, I, I credit Alderperson Kittleson for being the driving force and kicking us all in the butt and getting us involved. So thank you. Thank you. All right, well, then that moves us on to agenda item number six, which is a recommendation uh, that we as the Committee of the Whole can then refer back to ourselves as the Common Council on whether or not the, the city should engage and accept this, uh, this program. It is item 540 from our last meeting, and it is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a letter of understanding with bargaining units for voluntary participation in the Virgin Health Miles program. Alderman Boren. I was just going to make a motion to give a favorable uh, favorable uh, recommendation to the council. Second. Uh, there is a motion and a second on item 540 under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. I was going to make the same motion, but thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, please call the roll. Born. Aye. Bell. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gesher. Aye. Hannah votes aye. Heidelman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Greenflush. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassen. Aye. Wagman. Aye. Passes unanimously. Very good. Well, thank you, uh, Alderperson Kittleson. Congratulations. We'll refer this back to ourselves, and we can uh, we can vote on it. And, and as I Stay tuned for more information. We'll be coming forward with uh, just exactly how we're going to be going forward with all of this. So you. we'll keep you going. Next agenda item is the good of the order. And I've received counsel from, uh, from the city attorney that we should tread lightly on this because it's a vague, uh, a vague description. And so why I put this on the agenda is to give us a time as a body to have a conversation about how we do business if anybody chooses to. This is on here. There's no real other forum for us to talk to each other about how we're doing business. So we need to stay away from any particular topic. We can't uh, gather information on a topic or discuss a topic that's not on the agenda. But if, for instance, we do want to talk about how frequently we meet, if we want to talk about uh, the nature of how we're doing business, we can do that under, under this forum. So is there anything that the body would like to engage in uh, as a discussion? Alderman Reinflech. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had promised everyone I would not talk this evening. Uh, to keep the meeting uh, lively, uh, but I urge you to uh, also be very careful with this agenda item. Um, if there is something specific that we would like to discuss within this this more broad forum that we have in this committee item, uh, the same format that we use to put something on the agenda for Common Council is, is apt. Uh, if we would like to discuss number of times we meet, send that to an email to you. You can put that on the agenda discussion regarding times we meet. 
Um, it, it's still not as handy, but the, it's, there's specific reasons why the state requires us to be as specific as possible on the agenda uh, so that, that the public is aware of, of what exactly we're discussing. So um, I agree, tread lightly on this one as well. Um, but there is a way that we can do this and then simply email you uh, before the agenda comes out since we know by the end of this meeting when the next meeting will be. We have time to email you a topic that we would like to discuss that we simply add to the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President. Thank you. I have a non-controversial topic. This will be our first Roar on the Shore this weekend. So I would encourage everybody to, uh, to get down to the South Pier and participate. Uh, it looks like our tourism department's done a great job. Uh, in setting up a terrific weekend. I know that the merchants and the restaurants are all very excited. So the roar on the shore. Alderman Gishel will be showing off all three of his Harley Davidson tattoos. <laughs> Alderman Ryan, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to reiterate what, uh, what uh, Alderman, uh, what the heck is his name over there? Uh, <laughs> right there. Hannah, Hannah oh. <laughs> said about the roar on the shores. Um, the tourism department has put a lot of work into it. It's going to be a great event. There's going to be multiple bands, uh, vendors. There's going to be a uh, Brown and Foreman uh, booth set up, which uh, Brown and Foreman just happens to be the parent uh, company of Jack Daniels. Uh, they're going to have a stand down there that uh, people can get uh, uh, beverages of their choice. It's going to. It'll be a big event. Hopefully, we get some good weather for it. But I do urge the uh, general public to come down to the South Pier and uh, have some fun. That's what, it's, uh, that's what it's all about. It's to uh, bring people into Sheboygan, hopefully that haven't been here before, and they'll like what they see and they'll come back. So. Very good. Thank you. Uh, anything else under the good of the order? Very good. Thank you for that discussion. Uh, the next item is to set the date of the next committee of the whole meeting. We've been referred a couple of documents that seem rather timely. Uh, one that we need to dispose of has to do with the uh, pets on leashes in Maywood and Evergreen Park. And that uh, the body needs to be able to discuss and, and, and dispose of as we see fit. Um, and then also I'd like to add on to that a discussion of uh, pets in parks on leashes in general, not related to Maywood and Evergreen. That's item 4-47 from a previous meeting. And then item 5-49 has to do with the residency requirements um, for employees of the city of Sheboygan uh, brought uh, to us by all the persons born, Clionis, Heidemann, and Verhasselt. Uh, so those, those are what I am proposing for the next committee, the whole meeting. And because of the uh, schedule of the Salary and Grievance Committee, uh, I propose the date of June 23rd at 5.30 before that evening's uh, Common Council meeting, or excuse me, Finance Committee meeting. We would keep it to just those two topics, and we would keep it to uh, 80 minutes or less so we have time to get to the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, that's my intention, I'd, but I'd entertain any, any thoughts on that issue if anybody wants to discuss. Okay, great. Well, then that's when we'll set uh, the meeting. We'll determine the location and send that out. Anything else before this body? <clears throat> Mr. Vice President. Uh, because, of the, uh, because of the agenda item with the city residency being a very uh, popular topic with constituents, I would recommend that we hold that at a venue where uh, the public can see it on television because... Uh, we get a lot of questions about that issue at, at candidate forums when we're running for office, and I would like to see it in a venue where the public can see the discussion. Seems like a hot topic. What say you? Okay, then we'll, uh, we'll do it right here then. We'll plan on doing it in the council chambers at 5.30 on June 23rd. Okay, entertain a move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good evening. Thank you.